Welcome to the next lecture on the introduction to our software. In this session, we are going to discuss about a new concept that is called as a list. First, let us try to understand what do we really mean by list and how it is different from say some other commands like as vectors or matrix. And this topic will be covered in the two lectures, this lecture and the next lecture. So, first let us try to understand what is called a list. Let me take a very simple example to understand what do we mean by here list. Suppose uh, you are asked to write down the marks that you have obtained in say class 10. What you will do? Here you will try to write down the subject say maths, then say some language, say English, say science, say Hindi, biology and say social science and so on. And then you will write the marks obtained in each of the subject say out of 100. Suppose the candidate has got 80 out of 100 in English, he has got say 70 out of 100 in science, say this 85 marks out of 100 in Hindi, suppose 75 marks out of 100, biology say this 78 marks out of 100 and say social science say 72 out of 100. Now, in this structure, what do you find? That I have here two types of structure. One, these are here some characters. And on this side, we have here numbers. Now, so if you try to see, we have written a combination of characters and numbers and what do you say in simple language? I have created a list of the marks in every subject which a candidate has got in class 10. This is simply a list. Now, you will get a little bit puzzled. What is the difference between this list and say any other thing? So, let me try to take here an example of here matrix. Matrix is simply an arrangement of numbers in rows and columns. For example, this number can be 2, 5, 8, 10. And all sorts of mathematical manipulations can be operated over this matrix. Whereas, in case if I try to write down here a matrix something like 2 and say here I write the hello and say here 5 and say here 8, then will you call this as a matrix? Well, one can call, but uh, you cannot operate uh, any mathematical operators over this matrix. So, in say matrix, all the entries are only in numbers. And when I am trying to deal with list, can have the entries in numbers as a character or a combination of them. Right. So, Whenever we are trying to do the data analysis, there are certain situations where we need to input the data or we need the output of data in the form of a list. So, the advantage of having a list is that we can have 
all sorts of data inside the list that can be a character, that can be a say number or say anything else. Whereas, when we are trying to deal with vectors or say matrix, then we can enter the data usually in the form of only numbers. That can be used with any mathematical operators. So, now firstly, let us try to have a brief discussion and say uh, idea about the list and then we will see how to create a list and how to manipulate over the list in say R programming. Right. So, now as we have discussed here, we have understood that whenever we are calling of the vectors, matrix or say array, usually in this type of uh, objects, the data can only be of one type and usually it is numerical. Whenever we think about matrix or vector, usually we think in terms of some numbers. On the other hand, in case if you want to use a vector or a matrix that can also contain all the characters also, in case if you need. But as we said, this will not be useful from the mathematical point of view. For example, in case if a matrix has a character say hello, you cannot obtain say x transpose x or you cannot multiply that matrix with anything else. So, in order to overcome such issues, list is used. This list is a special type of object that can have multiple types of data or the data in multiple modes. What is called a mode? We already had discussed the concept of mode when we were trying to discuss about the logical vector, but in the but after a few slides, I will try to take up this issue in more detail. So, one of the basic characteristic that you have to keep in mind about list that in the list, the elements do not need to be of the same type. They can be of different types and that is the advantage of having a list over a vector, matrix or an array. And when we are saying that a list can contain different types of uh, data, that means in a technical language we are saying that the elements of the list may have different modes. The advantage of having a list is that once we have a list, we can use the elements inside the list to create another structures of data set. And even list can also contain some structure objects. That itself can be a for example, a list, matrix, data frames and so on. And using this bigger list, we can create different types of data structure. The list also has an index option. That means, the entries in the list can be indexed by their positions. For example, just for the sake of illustration, if I say here, if I try to create a list here, say here denoted by here says x, then if I try to write down inside this square brackets, double square brackets and if I try to write down here 5, then this 5 is referring to the fifth element in the variable x. So, that is another advantage of using a list that all the entries can be indexed. Lists has another advantage that a list can extract sublist. That means, list can also extract a part of the list that we can call is as say sublist. Suppose there is a list which is given by the name x and suppose I want to extract its second and fifth element. So, this is a sort of here sublist of x and this sublist of x can be extracted 
using the quiz command. So, this is a sublist of x that contains second and fifth elements of x. Another advantage of using list is that the elements of list can also have some names. For example, if I try to give a name here students, then these names are enclosed by the double quotes and they are enclosed in the double square bracket sign over here followed by the name of the variable that is containing the list. And this will refer as if I am trying to have the name of students and that we had uh, seen earlier and we will see in the further lectures also that this thing can be uh, also be obtained using this command x dollar students. And this means that I am trying to refer to an element whose name is students. So, the basic difference between a vector and a list is that in a vector all the elements are going to have the same mode and in a list the elements can have different modes. So, now before going further let us try to understand what do we really understand by modes. Actually every object has a mode. What does this mean? The mode indicates that how the object is stored in the memory of a computer. For example, this can be stored as a number, as a character string, as a list of pointers to other objects, as a function or say something else also. So, whenever we are trying to use the function, let us try to understand what are the different types of modes. So, here in this table I have uh, listed the possible modes and then I will try to take an example that what do we mean by that particular type of mode and what is the mode that is mentioned in the third column. So, for example, an object can be a number, for example, 1.234, 5.6 or say 7 and so on. What is this? That we know from our common language that this is a number. So, the mode of this number is called as numeric. So, the mode of a number is numeric. Similarly, in case if I try to take a vector of numbers, that means I am trying to contain, I am trying to consider more than one numbers at a time. For example, I have written here a vector which is combined by the four values 5, 6, 7 and 8. So, you can see here 5, 6, 7 and 8 all are actually number. So, a combination of a number is also number. So, the mode of vector of numbers is also numeric. Now, let me try to take some characters which are non numbers. For example, if I try to take a character string say some name say India, then obviously this is not a number, but this is a character. So, I can say the mode of a character string is character. And similarly, if I try to take more than one characters at a time, they can be combined through the C command in a vector. And for example, here I try to take here two characters India and USA and I try to club them, combine them with the character C, with the operator C. So, this is a combination of the characters. So, the combination of a character is also a character and, and hence the mode of vector of characteristic is a character. 
there is another type of object what we call as factor. Uh, we have not yet uh, discussed about the factor that we will take up in the upcoming lectures. But here, in case if I try to take a factor or a combination of factor, this can be written in this format and you have to just note down that the mode of a factor is numeric. Well, at this stage it is difficult for me to give you more details, but definitely as soon as we try to discuss the, the concept of factor, I will try to take up this topic again. Okay. So, here you could just try to keep in mind. Now, I come to another this object which is here list. List can contain all sorts of elements. They can be character strings, they can be numbers or say anything. For example, I am trying to create here a list of India and USA and the mode of list is actually list. At this moment, you may get a little bit confused what is the difference between this and this. They are trying to give us the same thing, but you just wait for some more slides and he will come to the uh, discussion on list and then it will be more clear to you that what is the difference between this. What I am trying to, uh, to tell you here that whenever we are trying to create a list, the mode of list is list. And similarly, there is another object what we call as data frame. We have not done data frame up to now, but we will be doing it in the upcoming lectures, forthcoming lectures. So, till then you have to wait to understand what do we really mean by data frame. But anyway, means in a data frame, we can also contain different types of data that can be characteristic, that can be numerical and they are denoted by data dot frame over here and the mode of data frame is also a list. Another object is function. We already have done this function in the initial lectures and we had used one function there as say here print that was used to display the output or to display anything, any number or a character. And if you try to find out the mode of this function, then this is a function. And these type of modes help us in determining in a bigger data set where we cannot look into the individual value to find whether my data set has a number or a character or a combination of them or it is a logical vector and so on. So, I have taken some of the objects, some of the important objects and then I have described you that what are their modes. Right. Okay. Now, we come to the aspect that how do you find out the mode? Well, we also had discussed it earlier, but here I will try to repeat it with some more example on other types of mode. So, mode function gives us the information about the mode and the syntax is simply here mode and inside the bracket you have to specify the value of which you need to find out the mode. So, let me try to take here some examples and we try to see here. For example, I am trying to take the same example that I have given in the table. For example, can I want to find out what is the mode of 1.234? As soon as you enter here, you will get here numeric. Similarly, in case if you try to find out the mode of a vector which has got 4 values 5, 6, 7, 8 all numbers, then this comes out to be numeric. And if you try to find out the mode of a character string like as here India, this will come out to be here as a character. And in case if you try to create a vector of characters using the 
combined option like as here I am trying to combine two letters India and USA, this will also come out to be as a character. Now first let us try to see on the R console that whether this works or not. You can see here this is now the mode of 1.234 and this comes out to be numeric. Similarly, in case if I try to find out here the mode of a vector say 3, 5, 7, 8 and so on, then this comes out to be a vector. And similarly, if I try to find out here the mode, mode of my name say Shalab, this comes out to be as a character. And similarly, if I try to take here a vector of these characters, say Shalab, comma, this R course, comma, say MOOC, yeah, that you have to remember that all the these letters have to be combined inside the C operator and with it double quotes. So, you can see here this comes out to be here a character. So, this is the screenshot of all this operation. Well, I have taken a different name, but the outcome is the same. Similarly, in case if you try to take here another object like as here factor, then I have to write it nearly similar to what I did in the case of uh, say here character, but the difference is that here I am trying to use here two characters UP and MP, Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh and these are two character strings, but when I am trying to write down here factor, this mode is coming out to be numeric. That you have to keep in mind, that is the basic difference what we did as a uh, that when we try to take it here as a factor and if you try to see here, this is here also in the table also, that the difference between this character of a string and here this thing, here I have got character, but here I have got here numeric. So, when we are trying to find out the mode of a vector of character strings, and a factor, both are containing the vectors of characters, but their modes are different. That is an important point which you have to keep in mind. And similarly, when I try to create here a list with two characters, this again you will see here that this comes out to be here as a list. And similarly, if I try to take here a data frame and I try to find out its mode, this comes out to be here as a list. And similarly, if I try to take here a function, say here print, and then this outcome comes out to be here as a function, right. So, let us try to do this thing in the R console and let us try to see here what happens, say about factor, you can see here this is coming out to be numeric. And Similarly, if you try to see here for the list, this comes out to be here as a list. And similarly, if you try to go for the data frame, this comes out to be here as a list. And similarly, if you go by this here function print, then this comes out to be here as a function. So, this is how this mode function works and in the next slide I have taken the screenshot of the same operation over here, so that you can have a look and you can practice yourself with the same command to verify whether we, uh, you are also getting the same outcome or not. So, now at uh, this stage I would like to stop here so that you can have some time to understand the basic fundamental of list and to understand about different types of modes. And in the next lecture, I will continue with the list. Till then, 
goodbye.